For our final theorem of this section, we're going to prove the converse of the first theorem that we proved in this section. The first theorem was, if a sequence is convergent, then it is Cauchy. Now we're proving the converse. We're going to prove, if a sequence is Cauchy, then it is convergent. So let's start the proof. Since we're beginning with a Cauchy sequence, let's let A and B Cauchy. And our job is to prove that it's a convergent sequence. If the range of A in is finite, then the sequence is constant from some fixed index on, and therefore it converges. Maybe I'll let you think about why that's true. But let's say you've got a sequence with two elements. One, two, let's say it does one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That sequence is not Cauchy. The distance between any two consecutive terms is one. For a Cauchy sequence, I've got to say, okay, for one half, for, for, epsilon, for a epsilon equal one half, at some point in the sequence, the distance between any pair of terms beyond it needs to be less than one half, and that would not be the case. So it turns out if you've got a Cauchy sequence, with a finite number of possible elements, just to reiterate here, the range of the sequence is the set of just the different possible values in the sequence. So if you only have a finite number, just like we did the example with two different numbers, in order for it to be Cauchy, at some point forward, it's going to be a constant sequence. And the proof that that's convergent is just very similar to the proof that the constant sequence, say 1, 1, 1, dot, 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 is convergent. So that gets rid of the easy case. Otherwise, the range is infinite. We have an infinite number of different values in this sequence. And we're going to let s equal the range of that sequence, which means all of those different values. Since S is bounded, why is it bounded? Because every Cauchy sequence is bounded, and S is a subset of that. It's, it's the set of all the different values in A n, the distinct values. And that was by theorem 1.4. Every Cauchy sequence is bounded. We have an infinite bounded set, therefore it has an accumulation point by the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Call it A. Since there is an accumulation point, we're going to call the accumulation point of the set S, lowercase a. Okay, we are going to show that the sequence A n converges to that number A. So to show convergence, as always, we start off with let epsilon be greater than zero, or let epsilon greater than zero be a given number. Since the interval a minus epsilon over 2 to a plus epsilon over 2 is a neighborhood of a, it contains infinitely ele many elements of S. Why is that? By definition, A is an accumulation point of the set S. Since A n is Cauchy, it's a Cauchy sequence, there exists a capital N in the natural numbers, that's an index, such that little m and little n greater than that capital M, capital N, implies that the distance between them is less than epsilon over 2. And since this interval A minus, epsilon, a, uh, a minus epsilon over 2 to A plus epsilon over 2 contains infinitely many
elements of S and hence of the sequence AN. Because remember, S is a subset. This is the distinct elements of AN. So if this interval contains infinitely many elements of S, it contains infinitely many elements of that sequence. Since that's, tr that's true, there exists a natural number. I'm calling it n naught or n sub zero, um, where I'm just going to put comma n zero greater than or equal to n. So it's a natural number that's at least as big as capital N, such that. A sub, uns, sub n zero is an element of the interval a minus epsilon over two, a plus epsilon over two. Remember, a is an accumulation point of the set S. And I think we can tie it up in one more sentence that has a little bit of algebra in it. Therefore, For all n greater than or equal to n zero, no longer capital N, but I need it to be, I need it to be n zero, because n zero is for sure in this interval. Sorry, a n zero is in this interval. So for all n greater than or equal to n zero, we have the following. A n minus A, and all we need to do is prove that this is less than epsilon. So that's less than or equal to A n minus A n zero plus A n zero minus A. That's simple algebra. I had added zero to the absolute value. Minus n, minus a sub n naught plus a sub n naught. <clears throat> we'll use the triangle inequality. A n minus a n zero plus a n zero minus a. <clears throat> and that's less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two, which is equal to epsilon. <clears throat> and maybe I'll tie it off with comma and a n converges to a. So one final statement that we can make, um, I should write it down as a theorem, maybe I will. It kind of summarizes what we did in this section. The sequence AN is Cauchy if and only if AN is convergent. Now that only holds true um, for the real numbers that we're studying. Um, in general, that's not true, but for in our real analysis class, it is true. When this is a sequence of real numbers, it's Cauchy, the sequence is Cauchy, if and only if it's convergent.